I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today in our discussion around our mid-year outlook for 2016. And as you can see from the slide on the screen, the theme for the remainder of the year is a vote of confidence. Confidence in our economy, confidence in the market, and most importantly, confidence in our ability as investors to remain focused on our long-term goals. The basis for this vote of confidence comes down to four major themes. Number one, Federal Reserve rate hikes, in part due to the political and economic uncertainty created by the Brexit vote, we have reduced our forecast for the Fed rate hikes in 2016 from two down to one, with additional rate hikes next year. Should financial conditions tighten more than we expect, the Fed could remain on the sidelines all year long. International opportunities, we remain cautious in our global outlook but continue to look for opportunities, especially in emerging markets. And we'll talk about that in greater detail. Corporate America investments. A pickup in economic growth and an energy sector turnaround may boost companies' investments in their future growth, an element that's really been lacking recently. And then lastly, second half turnarounds in oil, the dollar, and earnings. These three turnaround stories are the key to the rest of 2016. Despite heightened political uncertainty in Europe, we expect continued stabilization in oil prices and the US dollar, both of which have been an earnings drag over the past several quarters. Should these drags ease, we expect an earnings rebound may occur in the second half of the year. So let's cut right to the chase. What do we like? What do we think we should avoid? First off, what do we like? Cyclical stocks. These are companies that would benefit from ongoing U.S. economic expansion and improving economic growth in the U.S. and emerging markets. Emerging market stocks. Currently, these, these stocks offer attractive valuations, even more so than developed nations, uh, even the United States. Master limited partnerships. Yields are attractive, and MLP should benefit from the balancing of supply and demand in the oil market in the second half of the year. Long, short equity strategies. This can be a good way to maintain exposure to the stock markets, but also damper some volatility. We still like large cap growth stocks and high quality immediate, uh, intermediate bonds, as well as high yield bonds. But some things we think you might want to avoid, defensive stocks. Valuations here have become extremely high, making these stocks somewhat expensive. And with challenges in Europe, and some uncertainty around the economic conditions there. We think develop international stocks and bonds may be something we want to avoid. The overall forecast for the remainder of 2016 is that the US economy is going to grow between two and two and a half percent. No different than our expectation at the start of the year. We expect stocks to be in the mid single digit range, which is where we currently are. And we've actually increased our forecast with bonds from flat to low mid single digit returns. Now, please know that we are actually there with bonds. So the forecast for the remainder of 2016 for bond prices still are flat. Let's talk for a moment regarding the change in the global economy and our thoughts around investing globally. On the chart, you'll see a graph of the US market, defined by the S&P 500 in dark blue. Emerging markets, Brazil, India, uh, developing nations in light green, and developed nations, Europe, Japan, in the light blue. What you can see directly from the chart is our markets have performed significantly better than the rest of the globe. And more importantly, when we look at valuations, those stock prices compared to the earnings output from those companies in those different regions. You'll see that the dark blue and the light blue lines, uh, the United States and developed nations are relatively more expensive compared to emerging markets. This is our main catalyst for the recommendation 
of interjecting additional emerging market exposure to the portfolio, especially as a substitute for developed international stock exposure. Let's talk about stocks. We have confidence in corporate America, but we'd also like to see corporate America have confidence in itself. Earnings weakness has been a restraint on corporate and investor confidence. But with the drags on earnings finally easing, an earnings turnaround may be on the horizon. For example, one drag has been the US dollar. If you think about companies that sell their goods and services abroad, a strong dollar makes those goods and services more expensive in foreign countries. As we see the strong dollar begin to ease, we think this could actually become a tailwind and now help corporate profits of those co companies in the third and fourth quarter of this year. Similar st story with oil. Oil has been a drag on corporate earnings with the energy sector. But with oil starting to stabilize and the expectation of continued stabilization of prices, this could actually be a catalyst for that energy sector to show signs of recovery in the third and fourth quarter. Oil's relationship with stocks and bonds remains a top issue for investors. Oil was one of the biggest keys for the stock market's performance in 2015. In addition to the energy sector's significant impact on overall domestic corporate profits, oil has been closely tied to capital spending, credit markets, and emerging market economies. The correlation between stocks and oil is likely to fall as oil prices move higher, and therefore, this would present less of a risk to the economy and the markets. But as long as oil stays around $50 or below, it'll likely remain a source of equity market risk. Bond investors still face a low return environment. The good news has been largely factored into the current prices. In absence of signs of large scale economic deterioration, further gains in bonds will most likely be limited. And in fact, with the potential of rising interest rates, the expectation for returns in bonds moving forward is very minimal. As you can see from the attached chart, even if we see a modest quarter percent increase in the 10 year treasury yield, the total return for bonds in the second half of the year is likely to be flat at best. If we had to emphasize one mantra of investing, it would be the importance of maintaining a long-term perspective. We must keep our emotions in check and strive to block out the hype. This year, there will certainly be more hype regarding the upcoming presidential election. A couple of key points regarding election years. Typically, these have been strong years for stocks, especially if you exclude the abnormality in 2008, the worst year of the Great Recession. Gains averaging nearly 10% a year with positive returns in a solid 87% of all election years. This election year pa pattern for stocks suggests volatility may persist throughout the summer months until markets have more clarity on the candidates and their platforms. Once that clarity arrives, Often before the election itself, stocks have typically staged a late year rally. The market mantra, gridlock is good, suggests that a split Congress or a president from the party opposite of the one in control of both houses of Congress would be better for markets. The downside, however, is that that gridlock could limit policy action at a time when it's needed on several fronts, taxes, entitlement reform, immigration, security, et cetera. Historically, the combination of a Democratic president and a split Congress has been best for markets, though it has incurred very infrequently. The average gain of 10.4% for the Dow Jones is by far the best, as the chart uh, shows. A Republican sweep of the White House and Congress has been positive for stocks as well, with an average gain of over 7%. I'd like to end with a few thoughts regarding long-term strategies for financial success. The first is diversification. Recently, during the last five years, diversification has not improved portfolio performance. 
However, when we look at the long term, especially in the last decade, 2000 to 2010, a diversified portfolio outperformed a non-diversified portfolio nine out of 11 years. Diversification's contribution to investment performance is cyclical. Therefore, our message remains the same, and we believe in diversification over the long term. Over the past 50 years, based on daily data, the S&P 500 has been positive only 53% of the time. But over longer periods, the likelihood of positive performance improves dramatically as the holding period elongates. This is why we must maintain a long-term focus as investors. As we think about the upcoming election and the markets and economy for the remainder of the year, I'd like to leave you with one closing thought. The reality is that what makes a democracy work is that all of our votes matter, not any one ballot. And investing, the same is true. It's a collection of market days that combine to create what Albert Einstein coined as the most powerful force on earth, compounding. Thus, elections and investing are both fueled by constant participation. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. As always, if anyone has any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks and have a great day.